how will I change this into this? In this video, we'll explore how to take a section of a painting that's feeling a bit too rigid or overpowering and bring it back down to earth. We're using acrylic paints, brushes, and some clever techniques. So by the end of this video, you'll have gained some knowledge on how to tame even the most unruly sections of your artwork and create a more harmonious, visually appealing piece. As a self-taught artist, I run into issues and hurdles all the time. I mean, due to lack of art education, I have no grasp at times. And if you're in the same boat, welcome. Let's figure this out together. My channel is about discovering and learning as you go. So you get to watch me work through and figure out some problems, hoping to inspire you to keep on going with your own work, knowing you're not alone in this sometimes messy art journey. Going into this painting session, I knew it initially was going to look ugly. There's always that stage in every painting or in every section of a painting. If you choose to work in sections like I do, I really, really have to push myself to keep on going in this stage. But hmm, yeah, I must be honest, it's a struggle every single time. So rest assured though, you are not alone in this ugly painting face situation. It's really just part of the process. There is absolutely no shame. The common issue of harsh lines and or crazy contrasts in acrylic painting is that it can disrupt the flow and harmony of an artwork. When it comes to creating a cohesive piece of art, Balancing harsh and soft element is quite crucial. Um, if you're not careful, your painting can easily become overwhelming or even kind of jarring to the one who's looking at it. Now, one of the most effective ways to achieve this balance is by softening the harsh painting sections. So what exactly do I mean by a harsh painting section? Well, simply put, it's an area of your painting that's drawing a little too much attention to itself. Whether that's due to bold colors or sharp lines or even just a general sense of tension. You'll notice that by the end of this first part of my painting session, it doesn't even look like it's part of the dog at all. Now, these areas can be distracting and disrupt the flow of the rest of the painting, which is why it's so important to learn how to soften them. And I will show you how I did that a little further in this video. Now, harsh lines can also be a major challenge, especially if you're working with a medium that's prone to creating sharp, defined edges, like acrylics. Now, if you do the same thing I'm doing in this painting session, but with oils, your outcome will be completely different. So do take note of what medium you're using and know how it responds to what you do with it. But even with these challenges, there are always ways to soften those harsh lines and create a more cohesive piece. After about 15 minutes, I'm at this stage, the ugly phase, and I'm well aware that the colors are not right, that it needs more softening, it needs more glazing, the nose needs more details. I had places to be, so I ended my painting session feeling really frustrated, and I didn't get back to this painting until two days later. Trust me, I was a little disturbed and disappointed and didn't want to look at it even. I was feeling slightly intimidated to try and continue it. So when I did get back to it and while setting up my station, I was a bit nervous. I mean, can I fix this? This is not pretty. It's not soft and it doesn't look appealing at all. Can I make this better than the current state that it is in? Softer and fluffier is the goal here. So how am I going to achieve that? So the first thing I did was to grab a different type of brush, a more coarser brush with stiffer bristles. Now here's a tip. If what I previously did didn't get the results I wanted, I'll approach it differently. Isn't that a fool is someone who does the same thing over and over again expecting a different result? 
Yeah, let's not stoop down to fool level, shall we? The methods or techniques that can be used for softening harsh parts of your painting include glazing, blending, and dry brushing. Glazing is a fantastic technique for adding depth and subtlety to your painting, and it's especially useful for softening harsh colors. By layering thin, transparent washes of paint over your existing colors, you can create a sense of luminosity and depth that's really hard to achieve with opaque colors. Now, I use it all the time for both shadows and more subtle highlights, as well as color adjusting, uh, sometimes bringing back some warmth or sometimes cooler tones if that's what I'm going for. Now, I'm adding a glaze of light color, allowing what lies underneath to shine through. Now, blending, on the other hand, is all about merging colors together to create a seamless transition, which can be tricky with acrylics, but it's not impossible. This can be done either by layering wet on wet or by using a wet brush to pick up and blend the edges of two adjacent colors together. I find having your paint at the tacky stage works the best for blending, so not completely dry, but also not wet, like sop and wet either. Whilst this part is drying, I work on those details and used a mixture of burnt umber, paints gray, Mars black, and burnt sienna. I grabbed one of my smallest brushes and I was excited doing so. Usually handling a small brush, putting in tiny details makes me go straight to my happy place. I will put the video back on fast forward as this is not about nose details and any further parts of the video that showcases me working on the nose will most likely be on fast forward as well so that we can focus on the softening techniques rather than the itty bitty details. Now if you'd like more in-depth videos about painting a dog's nose feel free to leave me a comment. Now, as I was working on the nose, I decided to work on some color near the mouth as well, whilst the paint is still wet, which allows the paints to blend the parts together, giving a softer appearance, which makes me feel a lot, lot better. I grabbed an extra softer brush and I go over the section that I just painted with the smaller brush. Now, this softens the strokes and makes for a fluffier application. And it diffuses the pigment of the paint a little because you're wiping part of it away with that dry brush. Now that brush has to be dry. Don't use a wet brush because then you'll just wipe the paint right off your canvas. This can be achieved with your fingers as well. You see me do that many times. But remember, I'm trying not to be that fool doing the same thing over and over again. Using a technique called dry brushing is a great way to add texture and visual interest to your painting, while also softening harsh lines and colors. By dragging an almost dry brush across the canvas, you can create a subtle, hazy effect that's really effective at breaking up sharp lines. But mind you that this works a lot easier with oils versus acrylics. So make sure you practice, figure out what works best for your preferred medium. Try different amounts of paints on different types of brushes See how it responds. So put a lot of paint on it versus a little bit of paint. And then try and see what happens. And don't forget to try different types of pressure on that brush either. Don't expect these techniques to be mastered right off the bat. The key to mastering these techniques is practice. Practice and more practice. 
It takes a little bit of experimentation to get the hang of glazing and blending and dry brushing, but trust me, the results are well worth the effort. And don't forget to have fun with it. It isn't an exam or something to be approached with strive. Enjoy your process. Have fun with it. I continue going back and forth between the nose and muzzle sections, allowing paint to dry in between. Thank goodness acrylic dries fast, so I don't have to wait too long before going back over a previously painted section. I used the same color on the different sections to create a bit more harmony, and I repeated this until I was pleased with the result. In addition to these techniques, it's also important to have the right brushes for the job. You'll want to have a range of different brushes on hand, from soft, flexible ones for blending, like a filbert or mop brush or even a round brush, to stiffer ones for dry brushing and texture. Feel free to try brushes that aren't meant for your medium, though. You'll be amazed what you can do with them. Watercolor brushes are generally soft, so they can be used for blending, for example. Oil brushes can be stiffer which is great for dry brushing and adding interesting textures to your painting. It's okay to, figuratively speaking, color outside the lines here. There's no law that states you can't mix and match. I have a fan brush that I actually found in the oil brush section because I was looking for a coarser one than what the acrylic brushes were showing. They, they were really soft and I wanted a coarse one for foliage on trees. Therefore, I grabbed that oil fan brush because that's what I needed and that's totally okay. Now, as I mentioned before, I was expecting to go through the ugly phase. It doesn't mean I've messed up or made tons of mistakes. It means I laid down a foundation that I could work with because some of those colors still come through after the softening. So it wasn't a total waste of time, but I personally just have to learn to find peace in the chaos and to trust the process. Also, don't be afraid to experiment with different techniques and tools until you find what works best for you and your unique style. Whether it's glazing or blending or dry brushing, the important thing is to find a method that you enjoy and that helps you achieve the look that you're going for. Now, remember practice is key. The more you work with these techniques, the more comfortable you'll become and the better your paintings will be. Just keep on going, just keep swimming. Now I'm changing to a mop brush and a coarser brush. After about 40 minutes of softening around the mouth and the nose, as well as working on details on that nose, I just needed a little change as it got quite repetitive. So I decided to do another layer on the chest as I wasn't happy with how it looked. So I put on a bit of paint and go over it with that dry mop brush to soften it out. That same color will be applied around the nose and the mouth area as well. Just where I feel that it needs more softening and or brightening. Now do be gentle with that mop brush. Very light pressure seems to give me the results that I'm looking for.
Now that I've yammered about some of the key techniques for softening harsh painting sections, let's take a look at a dramatic before and after transformation to see just how effective these methods can be. The difference is like night and day, right? The harsh lines and colors have been toned down, and the entire section feels much more cohesive and balanced. I mean, it actually looks now like it's part of the dog. So I took about an hour or so to create an ugly nose and mouth, and about another hour to change that from harsh to soft and fluffy. If you have any questions or experiences you'd like to share, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to turn on the notifications. And go check out my other videos with more painting tips so we can learn together. Stay happy, keep your peace, and God bless you. Bye-bye! <laughs>